Hi, this is Miss Rachel again with another First Chapter Friday. Today we're going to be looking at Magic by Angie, Angie Sage. So if you like the Harry Potter series, this is probably the closest match to this. They're super thick books, but they're quick reads, so you have a lot to read. And this is book one in the Septimus Heap series. So there's a whole bunch to read after that, and they're really great. Um, this one is about... A boy named Septimus Heap, who the series is named after, and when he is born, the midwife hides him right away, and he's kind of, like, kidnapped, um, and the midwife tells the mom and dad that the little boy died during birth, so they think he's dead, and the dad, Silas, is really upset, and he goes out into the woods, um... And he comes across another little baby in a bundle, a newborn. He goes, oh, this must be a sign. I'm going to bring this baby back for my wife, and we're going to raise this baby. So the baby is a girl, and for some reason she has violet eyes, so that's some mystery. And then they name her Jenna, and they raise her like she's um, their own daughter. But they don't know where Jenna came from if someone's going to come back for her, why she was in the woods. And they also don't know what happened at all to Septimus. So he disappeared, but where'd he go to? And they think he's dead. So it's a magical mystery, and it's very good. This is chapter one, and it's read with permission from HarperCollins. And you can get this on the Hoopla app. Chapter one, Something in the Snow. Silas Heap pulled his cloak tightly around him against the snow. It had been a long walk through the forest, and he was chilled to the bone. But in his pockets, he had the herbs that Galen, the physic woman, had given him for his new baby boy, Septimus, who had been born earlier that day. Silas drew closer to the castle, and he could see the lights flickering through the trees as candles were placed in the windows of the tall, narrow houses clustered along the outside walls. It was the longest night of the year, and the candles would be kept burning until dawn to help keep the dark at bay. Silas always loved his walk to the castle. He had no fear of the forest by day and enjoyed the peaceful walk along the narrow track that threaded its way through the dense trees for mile after mile. He was near the edge of the forest now. The tall trees had begun to thin out, and as the track began to dip down to the valley floor, Silas could see the whole castle spread before him. The old walls hugged the wide, winding river and zigzagged around the higgledy-piggledy clumps of houses. All the houses were painted bright colors, and those that faced west looked as if they were on fire as their windows caught the last of the winter sun's rays. The castle had started life as a small village. Being so near to the forest, the villagers had to put up some tall stone walls for protection against the wolverines, witches, and warlocks who thought nothing of stealing their sheep, chickens, and occasionally their children. As more houses were built, the walls were extended and a deep moat was dug so that all could feel safe. Soon, the castle was attracting skilled craftsmen from across villages. It grew and prospered so much that the inhabitants began to run out of space until someone decided to build the Ramblings. The Ramblings, which were, was where Silas, Sarah, and the boys lived, was a huge stone building that rose up along the riverside. It sprawled for three miles along the river and back again into the castle and was a noisy, busy place filled with a warren of passages and rooms with small factories, schools, and shops mixed in with family rooms, tiny roof gardens, and even a theater. There was not much space in the ramblings, but people did not mind. There was always good company and someone for the children to play with. As the winter sun sank below the castle walls, Silas quickened his pace. He needed to get to the north gate before they locked it and pulled up the drawbridge at nightfall. It was then that Silas sensed something nearby, something alive, but only just. He was aware of a small human heartbeat somewhere close to him. Silas stopped. As an ordinary wizard, he was able to sense things, but as he was not a particularly good ordinary wizard, he needed to concentrate hard. He stood still with the snow falling fast around him, already covering his footprints, and then he heard something, a snuffle, a whimper, a small breath. He wasn't sure, but it was enough. Underneath, a bush beside the path was a bundle. Silas picked up the bundle and, to his amazement, found himself gazing into the solemn eyes of a tiny baby. Silas cradled the baby in his arms and wondered how she had come to be lying in the snow on the coldest day of the year. Someone had wrapped her tightly in a heavy woolen blanket, but she was already very cold. 
Her lips were a dusky blue and the snow dusted her eyelashes. As the baby's dark violet eyes gazed intently at him, Silas had the uncomfortable feeling that she had already seen things in her short life that no baby should see. Thinking of his Sarah at home, warm and safe with Septimus and the boys, Silas decided that they would just have to make room for one more little one. He carefully tucked the baby into his blue wizard cloak and held her close to him as he ran towards the castle gate. He reached the drawbridge just as Gringe, the gatekeeper, was about to go and yell for the bridge boy to start winding it up. You're cutting it a bit fine, growled Gringe, but you wizards are weird. What do you all want to be out for on a day like this? I don't know. Oh, Silas wanted to get past Gringe as soon as he could, but first he had to cross Gringe's palm with silver. Silas quickly found a silver penny in one of his pockets and handed it over. Thank you, Gringe. Good night. Gringe looked at the penny as though it were a rather nasty beetle. Marsha Overstrand, she gave me a crown just now, but then she's got class. What with her being the extraordinary wizard now? What? Silas nearly choked. Yeah, class, that's what she's got. Gringe stood back to let him pass, and Silas slipped by. As much as Silas wanted to find out why Marsha Overstrand was suddenly the extraordinary wizard, he could feel the bundle beginning to stir in the warmth of his cloak, and something told him that it would be better if Gringe did not know about the baby. As Silas disappeared into the shadows of the tunnel that led to the ramblings, a tall figure in purple stepped out and barred his way. Marsha, gasped Silas, what on earth? Tell no one you found her. She was born to you, understand? Shocked, Silas nodded. Before he had time to say anything, Marsha was gone in a shimmer of purple mist. Silas spent the rest of the long, winding journey through the ramblings with his mind in turmoil. Who was this baby? What did Marsha have to do with her? And why was Marsha the extraordinary wizard now? And as Silas neared the big red door that led to the Heap's family's already overcrowded room, another, more pressing question came into his mind. What was Sarah going to say to yet another baby to care for? Silas did not have long to think about the last question. As he reached the door, it flew open, and a large red-faced woman wearing the dark blue robes of a matron midwife ran out, almost knocking Silas over as she fled. She, too, was carrying a bundle, but the bundle was wrapped from head to toe in bandages, and she was carrying him under her arm as if he were a parcel, and she was late for the post. Dead, cried the matron midwife. She pushed Silas aside with a powerful shove and ran down the corridor. Inside the room, Sarah Heap screamed. Silas went in with a heavy heart. He saw Sarah surrounded by six white-faced little boys, all too scared to cry. She's taken him, said Sarah hopelessly. Septimus is dead, and she's taken him away. At that moment, a warm wetness spread out from the bundle that Silas still had hidden under his cloak. Silas had no words for what he wanted to say, so he just took the bundle out from under his cloak and placed her in Sarah's arms. Sarah Heap burst into tears. So we hope that you continue to read this book on Hoopla. Thank you, and see you next week.